although the world is filled with his glory, sometimes he hides. And to find him, you may have to scream. Rosh Hashanah is a time of the year that we associate with prayer. It's a day that we spend almost the entire day praying in shul. And it has the longest Musaf service of the year, consisting of nine brachot. And many piyotim, liturgical poems that have been added into our prayers. But there is another aspect to Rosh Hashanah, and that is the shofar. And the shofar is extremely different to prayer. Prayer is something which has been composed, it has words, it has a rhythm, but the shofar is a much more basic instrument, if you can call it an instrument at all. It doesn't produce a beautiful sound, a powerful sound. What is the secret of the shofar? And sometimes you gotta scream to find where you are. The Torah tells us that there are two sounds of the shofar. There's the tekiah. The tekiah is a straight forward sound. And then there is the trua, also called the shvarim. And trua, the Talmud tells us, the Aramaic translation is yabevta. It's a cry. It sounds like somebody weeping or crying. Why do we include this in our prayers on Rosh Hashanah? Why so many times I can't even count Cause I don't wanna lose you or to let you down I wanna know your feelings really after your heart Don't wanna be the reason that the light turned dark I run around the world, I'm collecting your sparks And sometimes I gotta scream to find where you are The Rambam Maimonides famously said that the shofar is a cry to repentance. It's Hashem calling to us. It's a wake-up call. It's an alarm clock. Oh, you who are sleeping, get up. Stop slumbering. Realize the, the faults of your ways. Don't get caught up in all of the nonsense of the times. Repent. Come back to Hashem. But we can look at the shofar from a different angle. There is prayer, and prayer is something, as I mentioned, that has particular words. It's sought through. A person knows how to enunciate their feelings. But there are times when a person just doesn't have the right words to say. They don't have the words at all. And all they do is cry out in pain. This is something that we see from the beginning of our history when the Jewish people were in Egypt. And it tells us in Pasha Shmot that one of the tyrants, one of the pharaohs of Egypt passed away. The situation of the Hebrews was no better. They cried out to God. the And their cry went up to God. It doesn't say that they prayed. They didn't know how to pray. They had lost all of that tradition from their forefathers. They had been slaves for so long. But what they could do is to cry out. 
And it's the same as, as a young child, a baby. When a baby cries out, although it's wordless and it sounds meaningless, but its parents, its mother, understands what it's saying. This is the shofar. It is the scream of a Jew to God to say we've prayed and we've said words, but now we've run out of words. And all we can do to communicate with you, God, is to, to pray, to shout out, to weep before you. And we hope that this weep, this cry, this scream that comes from the very depths of our soul will be answered by you. I wish you all a ketiva v'chatimatova. May you be written and inscribed in the book of life. I won't finish screaming till I find you.